All right. All right. So now, our main goal is to find the resistivity of this wire. So where does resistivity come in? Let's talk about resistance. Let's talk about what goes into making a resistance. Well, let's see here. So resistance, well, it has to be dependent on the material. In other words, if I had a, 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 a wire of copper and the same wire of, let's say, styrofoam, clearly the copper would have a lower resistance. So there must be some sort of value in this formula that is dependent on the material, and that's resistivity, which we do know by a rho, Greek letter rho. And the resistivity is also the temperature dependent. All right, so now we have to consider the geometry of the wire. Well, let's see here. We had a wire, and it was a lot longer. Well, that's a lot more space for the charged particles to travel. So the, high, the longer the wire, the more the resistance, a direct dependence. Okay, well, if we, we consider then the cross-sectional surface area. Well, if this was bigger, uh, more room for the charged particles to flow, an inverse dependence on the cross-sectional surface area. Now, uh, certain teachers have different analogies uh, for this, like, I don't know, water going through a pipe. I have my own analogy. Well, let's see. If, say that the low end, which is usually with the black wire, is our hero, Darth Vector. And say the positive charged particles were screaming girls in a corridor trying to get at our hero, Darth Vector. Ah, so if I increase the length, if I increase the length of that corridor, oh no, the ladies have a much longer hallway to travel, much more resistance in getting to all their prize. Or, if I have the same ladies and trying to reach their hero, Darth Vector, and then I decrease the cross-sectional surface, oh no, it's so much more cluttered, it's much harder for those ladies to reach Lord Vector. Hang in there, ladies. All right, so now back to here. The resistance, oh, we know this from Ohm's law, is V over I. Oh, great, substitution. This V over I in here, so we get V over I equals rho L over A. Uh, so with some rearrangements, look. Uh, let's study this arrangement. We have V, the voltage, equals rho I over A times L. This is a linearized equation. See, this would be the Y, this would be the M, this would be the X, and then no B. Oh, so good. So if we could find a series of different voltages and a series of different lengths on the wire. Well, we could plot a line, and our slope would be the resistivity times I over A. In other words, the resistivity is the slope times the cross-sectional area divided by the current. I'll say this now, be careful of your units. Be careful of your units, all right? Now, the current we talked about before. Now, the cross-sectional surface area, well, it's a wire, so it's going to be a circle. And you'll, be, you'll have to find the diameter. So it's pi d squared over 4. Now, if your TA loves you, he or she will give you the diameter. If your TA hates you, you'll have to find it yourself by using a veneer caliper. Uh, veneer caliper on the wire, just a little note. Use this position here to move it in, ballpark it, and then this one to move it in completely so you don't crush the wire. That's all I'll say. All right. So let's move back here. All right. So now let's take this apart. All right. So now let's look. This is R3. R3 is our wire. So let's see here. So let's trace this. This. This blue wire is coming out here, coming here. See, ah, so it's connected to this clamp here, and then here. This is the wire we're interested in, right there. And then all connected in this clamp here through this black wire, back to here. Okay, so now I use my adjunct 34405A. Let's get the resistance of the wire. Well, not quite the wire, because I just said we have some extra stuff on the side, but I won't tell if you won't.
Okay, so now I'm going to adjust the scale. That's good. It's going to be interesting. Okay, so notice now we are in ohms, not kilo ohms, ohms. Much less resistance than, say, R2. So our voltage drop we are anticipating is going to be much less than what we've seen so far in this experiment. All right, so great. So now we're done with that. Okay, so now let's put together our circuit. Okay, so this black knob here is screaming to be the low side. So to put these in series, it'll be this way. R2 in series with R wire. Uh, uh, a little note, it, this, uh, it can be confusing. In the first part, it was on this side. In the second part, the series wire is on the other side. All right? And so now from the function generator into here, so now it's coming in through R2, through the series wire, through the wire, and out the low side right here. Out the low side right there. Okay, channel one, just like before, we're going to put them across the series of both. High end through here, low end out there. And then channel two is going to be across the wire. Across the wire. So high end here, low end there. Okay, so now let's take a look at channel one. We want 12 volts now as our VN. Now keep in mind now, I'm going to set the 12 volts, but I'm setting the 12 volts just directly into the circuit. Remember in part one we set the 8 volts where this was plugged into here. And then we had less than 8 when we had to here. So just keep that in mind. Don't get confused. So it's directly into the circuit. Let's set back to channel 1. And we want 12 volts. Ah, but we only have 8 boxes. So I'm going to have to change the scale. I'm going to change it to 2 volts per box. So now I would increase the amplitude to 6. Six boxes to get my 12 volts. So I'm going to ground it. Uh-huh. My uh, no problems with my DC offset. I checked it before. Okay, back to DC. Increase the amplitude in the function generator to get six boxes. Perfect. Six boxes. Two volts per box. That there is 12 volts. We're done with channel one. Channel 2 is where the rest of our business lies. All right, now, as I told you, look, oh, goodness, what a sad little voltage that is. We need to change our scale. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Ah, oh, that's good. Okay, so now I have 10 millivolt division. So each box vertically represents 10 millivolts. So let's grab the V wire. So I'll position the bottom down there. The bottom of the fuzz, you want the bottom of the fuzz to the top of the fuzz. It's a little fuzzy, but since it's such a small signal, but do your best. All right, and then position like that. Okay, so let's see here. So one box, two, three, four, four point five six. So 4.56, and I'm in the 10 millivolts per box, so that's 45.6 millivolts. Careful of our units. Terrific. Terrific. All right, so now let's talk about how we're going to find our different voltages at different lengths. Well, look at this. Look at this. This will interrupt the signal in the wire. In other words, if I stop it here, look as I, look as I go down. Look at the signal as I go down. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller because now less and less of the wire is in the circuit. It's almost like, like say I stopped it right there. You see this blue wire here? I could now remove this blue wire. It's not part of it anymore. I could remove it. It's now ignoring all of this beforehand. All right, so I'll put the, wire, the blue wire back. Okay, okay, so now, great. Okay, so we start at, there's a ruler right underneath the wire. So we start first at one meter, measure the voltage at one meter. Then slide it down to 10 centimeters, to 90 centimeters, or 0.9 meters. Put it down, measure the voltage at 0.9 meters. Terrific, then I slide it down to 0.8 meters. 
push it down, measure the voltage at point A, and so on, all the way down to 10. That's it. From that, you can find the slope, find the resistivity. Good job, experimenters. Farewell.